Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So I thought it would be fun to do an all powder makeup tutorial because I just did that all cream liquid makeup tutorial. So I wanted to show you guys how you can achieve a really pretty makeup look using all powders because I think a lot of people are scared of that. And I also wanted to mention the reason that this drawer is always looking like this is because my cat is sleeping in that drawer and so I can't close it all the way. It's not because like I don't realize that it looks really stupid being half open. It's because my cat's in there. So I just wanted to lay that out there. Um, he literally gets in there every time I film a video, so it's literally always like that. Real quick, my favorite primer to do with almost all of my makeup looks, but especially when I'm doing powders, is the Juice Beauty Illuminating Primer. I love that primer. It's my favorite I've ever used probably, and I've repurchased it many times. I don't have one right now, so that's normally the primer that I would recommend and that I would go in with, but since I don't have it, I'm trying out this new little primer. It's by the brand LXMI. They sent me a few products, and this is a pore refining moisture veil, and it says it's gonna smooth your skin before makeup. So I just thought, might as well give it a go. It basically looks like, I think I just spilled it. It basically looks like a lotion, so, ooh, it smells nice. I thought I would just apply some of that and try it out. It's got a bit of a tacky feel to it, but interesting. Not sure how I feel. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is conceal, and for the all powder look, I'm using my Alima Pure Powder Concealer in the shade Amber. This is more of a yellowy warm tone shade, and I've used this in other videos, so I just like to tap it into the lid and swirl it with the Real Techniques setting brush. This is my favorite brush to apply it with. And we're just gonna start kind of like patting and pressing this under the eyes. When I'm doing a powder look, I definitely like to start with the powder concealer before foundation versus going the other way around. I just think it sets up a good base to then cover with powder foundation. And this is great at just adding more coverage to any discoloration that you would normally conceal or blemishes or whatever. If you have a lot of discoloration, this is a great base layer to go in with before your powder foundation. So you don't have to cake on the powder foundation. This is gonna be more efficient at covering that as like a first layer to the powder foundation. So that's definitely what I would recommend. All right, I had to fix my hair because those like front pieces were killing me. So we've applied the concealer and now the next step is powder foundation. I wish I could tell you guys I was using a new powder foundation, but I just can't. So I'm using my Alima Pure Satin Matte Foundation in the shade Beige 3. And I just kind of want to talk about tips when applying powders. So if you want more coverage, you're going to want to go in with a more tightly packed brush. If you want lighter coverage, you're going to want to go in with a more loosely kind of fluffy brush. I like to go in with the more tightly packed one. Get some product on your brush, not too much. Really swirl it into the bristles and then just start buffing this into the skin. So... This is something you really want to take your time with and just slowly layer on um, layer by layer instead of just kind of caking it on because that's what can look really, really dry and start to just not look as good. So just swirl this on and layer it up to your desired coverage. Normally where you wanna focus most of your coverage and like foundation is gonna be in the center of your face. So for me, I try and focus it like right in here around my nose. I don't like to put a ton on the bridge of my nose. Around my mouth and chin and like up in here is where I wanna focus it. And then when you're working towards the outer parts of the face, you just wanna make sure it's blended. But unless you have issues in those parts, you usually don't need as much coverage there. So you don't need to completely cover your entire face with the same amount of product. So I'm done with that and now I want to bronze. I look super washed out in this lighting so that's really not helping me out. But I wanted to show you guys a bronzer that I haven't used in so long and it's the Vita Liberata 
the tanning lines um, bronzer. So the reason that I never use this is because the package is really messy. It doesn't have anything to catch the product. So traveling wise and just with my lifestyle, it's just really inconvenient and super messy. But I wanted to show it to you guys because I really, really like the product and it's a beautiful color. So I'm swirling around what was already in the lid onto my brush. And I'm just gonna start bronzing up my skin. This product is kind of expensive. I think it's like around $50, but you can find it at Ulta and it's supposed to actually tan, like gradually tan your face. Um, I'm not sure if that actually works, but I do enjoy the product and the color of it. So I figure might as well use it. So this is giving a really nice glowy look to the skin and bringing some dimension and color back into my face. I think powder bronzers are super easy to apply and I feel like most people use a powder bronzer anyway, but you just wanna make sure you're swirling it in all the places that you want to do, kind of like the three on your face. And also make sure that if you are putting it all on your forehead and your cheeks to kind of incorporate it into the hairline so there aren't any harsh lines showing a harsh dark line and then it's white on the hair. So just kind of like buff it into the hair. That's definitely gonna give you the most natural look. I just find that bronzer really easy to apply and a really beautiful color on the skin. Like I said, it's really just the packaging that really is a bummer to me. So I might transfer it into a different package so I can take it to Minnesota with me, I don't know. For blush, I wanna use my Found Blush in the shade Pink Glow. This is what it looks like. It's a really pretty glowy pink blush that's from the drugstore. So Walmart has an organic beauty line called Found and you can basically just get them at Walmart, I believe. They're like a Walmart exclusive. And I found this blush there like last year and I actually really, really love it. So it's a nice pink blush, but it has some illuminating properties in it as well. So I'm just gonna tap this onto my cheeks. This is like a super easy and convenient everyday blush. It's just kind of a natural pink shade, so it pretty much goes with any makeup look or any outfit or anything like that. And this one is really hard to overdo, so if you're kind of a beginner with blush or you're a little bit afraid of blush, this would be a great one to try out, and I believe it's like around 10 or $12. I think the combination of those two products, that bronzer and blush, are really pretty together. I just feel very like springy and like fresh faced and just, I don't know, really good. I really like that combo. <sighs> Got my iced coffee. All right, the next thing we're going to do is highlight. So recently I watched another YouTuber that I like, Daisy Cash, and she was talking about her new way of applying highlighter that she really likes to do. And instead of applying it on like a small, you know, brush like this and being really precise, she, she likes to do it with a bigger brush. So I thought I would try that out today. The only brush I have is like this one right here. She used like a big stippling brush, which seemed perfect but I don't have that. So I'm gonna apply a highlighter that I also never use, and this is the Lily Lolo Champagne Highlighter. This was actually in a video I did a really long time ago about products that disappointed me. So I'm trying to give this a go, and I just want kind of like a subtle glow. So I'm gonna get that on the brush and just kind of like more widely sweep that where I would normally apply, apply highlighter, but just less precise. to kind of give an all around glow. Cause this is a very, very subtle highlighter anyways. So it's not gonna give like a really precise highlight line or anything. Can we see it? I know this light is really washed out. Okay, I think that added a little bit of glow, just very subtle, but brought some illumination to the skin. The next thing I'm gonna quickly do is gel up my eyebrows. So I'm using the 100% pure soft brown um, eyebrow gel and I'm just gonna fluff these up a little bit 
For eyeshadow, I thought I would show you guys the Airy Perez palette that I actually bought for my wedding and did not end up using. This is the Airy Perez palette in, in Gorgeous, I think. It's basically just a mix of beautiful brown shades. And I thought this would be really good for my wedding because that's kind of the look that I was going for. But I was kind of disappointed in the color payoff in this. So I thought maybe I would just try it out for you guys just because I never use it. Um, I want to do just something really basic. So I'm going to go in with this light copper shade all over my eyelid. And I'm going to use my little flat brush to do that. Yeah, when I tested this, I just felt like there was not a lot of color payoff. But maybe I was wrong. I don't know. It's a beautiful palette and if you're into like natural brown shades, this is a really great option and they have other ones as well. So this is coming off okay. It's not bad. I'm just kind of packing this onto the lid. It looks a little bit choppy and speckly. I don't know if you guys can see that. It's just not like the most finely milled eyeshadow especially for like having some sheen or shimmer to it okay it's like it's pretty the color is really pretty but i just feel like the product itself is not like super impressive but i don't know so i'm gonna go in with the third shade here like a warm kind of brown and i'm gonna do that in the crease it might be a bit warm but It's pretty. Okay, I think that looks really nice. It kind of goes along with like the kind of peachy cheek and stuff. I'm gonna take that same shade that we used in the crease along my lash line a little bit. So, kind of my thoughts using this palette are it totally works it i mean it looks really pretty on the eyes and stuff i would just say it's not like super impressive um and i don't think it's really anything special if you're looking for a new eyeshadow palette i would actually recommend the um the beauty counter ones they've come out with a massive palette with like all the shades and then they also have come out with some smaller more um curated palettes and again i don't actually have one i've just seen some youtubers talk about it and i really trust that it's like one of the best ones out there so if that's something that you're in the market for that's what i would recommend even though i haven't used it i just feel like that's the best option out there right now so i wanted to share that with you i'm going to curl my eyelashes really quick after I said all that, I'm probably going to end up like loving this eyeshadow look and then having to recall what I said in my next video for you guys. But as of now, I think the shades are really pretty, but they're just not anything special as far as like quality and formulation go. I feel like anyone can kind of make, you know, a pretty gold shade. So I'm just, it's, it's not creamy and it's not a lot of color payoff. I think those are the reasons that I'm disappointed by it. All right, so I'm gonna do some mascara and I'm switching it up and showing you guys again the Fit Glow Beauty Mascara. And I'm kind of into more of a lighter application than I usually go for. So that's like a nice little light layer of mascara. I even touched the bottom lashes, which I don't normally do, but with the shadow down there, they needed a little something. And I feel like that's almost the end of the look. I guess the last two things are, one of my major tips for applying powders is that you do want to use some sort of setting spray, just so that you can kind of mist the face, get a little bit of moisture and sheen to it. And also something that's going to dissolve the powder particles if there are any sitting on your skin or sitting like along your peach fuzz. You want something that's gonna kind of like mesh everything together and give it that complete look and not have it look dry or anything. I don't think my face looks dry at all right now, but this is just a pro tip. So you can use a setting spray. Um, I have the Lily Lolo setting spray and that works fine. I don't have it with me right now. So I'm using my favorite rose water spray and this is the SW Basics rose water spray and you can find this at Target. And I'm just gonna spray this along my face. All right, the last step to finish this little pinky bronze look that I ended up with is going to be my favorite 
lip gloss. It's the Fit Glow Beauty Lip Gloss in the shade Nudie. It's my absolute favorite. It's the perfect shade of pink for me. It just adds a little bit of color to the face, but it's super low maintenance and I'm obsessed with these lip glosses. I know they just came out with like a hot pink one, but it's like more sheer and I need it. These are just the most comfortable lip glosses to wear. I keep this one in my purse at all times. I had to grab it out of there to show you guys. I also have the shade Ever, which is a little bit darker and more berry. I wore that on my wedding day. But this one is just like the perfect pink for every day. You can apply kind of a lot or you can just do a little quick wash, you know, while you're in the car. And it's just so comfortable on the lips. Okay, you guys, so I hope you enjoyed this little makeup tutorial. I just wanted to casually get ready with you guys, show you all powder products and how they can look really beautiful on the face and not chalky, not powdery. You can't even tell. They blend really well. And I personally think they're really easy to apply. I think there's less of a room for error with powders personally. So I really like powders, I really like creams, but I wanted to show you guys this look. I hope you enjoyed the feedback I had on these products, as well as the tips that I have as far as applying the powder products. And if you have any questions or comments, you can leave them down below as always, and I'll see you guys in my next one.